10 News begins with breaking news. A major melee at Donovan State Prison, a brawl broke out involving at least 100 inmates. Cal Fire sending several crews on the ground and the air to help with medical aid. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. This wild scene unfolded inside the prison within the past two hours. Our 10 News reporter Anthony Pura is live outside the prison where some inmates were seriously injured in this fight. Anthony. Well, that's right. And in the past few minutes, we've seen several vehicles head towards the prison down this road. And just a short while ago, we've started seeing some of those emergency vehicles start to come back up this road, leaving the prison. We understand that Cal Fire has set up a triage in there, though it's not visible from where we're standing here at the prison entrance. I want to show you some video now taken just a short while ago. Two medical choppers were called out for the injuries. We understand there were at least six patients two of which were in serious condition. There were about 100 inmates in the yard area when this riot broke out around 8 o'clock this evening, according to Cal Fire. Now, this is just the latest in a series of prisoner fights inside Donovan. Back in February, there was a riot of 50 inmates. This is video shortly after that fight. 10 prisoners were hurt in that incident. It also happened in the yard area. Guards had to use pepper spray to get that situation under control. And in April, three inmates were stabbed after a seven on one fight. Now we're still waiting on prison officials to brief us about this incident, but we understand that no guards were hurt and we will bring you more information as soon as it becomes available. We're reporting live outside Donovan State Prison. Anthony Pura, 10 News. Anthony, thank you. We will continue to follow the breaking developments from this story on our 10 News mobile app. There is a free version available in the App Store. Just search 10 News. New tonight, an Illinois State Police Trooper has died while serving in the line of duty. 33 year old Nicholas Hopkins was shot early this morning while serving a search warrant at an East St. Louis home. The 10 year old 10 year veteran was taken to the hospital where he later died. Police surrounded the home and arrested at least two people. They have not said why the search warrant was served or if anyone else was shot. A guilty plea today from a mother who was three times over the legal limit when she caused this devastating head on crash in Rancho Bernardo. Mayra Croncoso admitted to felony child abuse and drunk driving charges in November's crash. Her SUV with her three young daughters inside crossed the oncoming traffic plowed into a Jeep. The girls were seriously injured, including a nine month old who was riding unrestrained. The Jeep driver also suffered broken bones, and at the time of the crash, Troncoso was already on probation and driving on a suspended license for another DUI crash in the North County. She will be sentenced in a month. There are new details about the Tierra Santa home where a two-year-old girl was found dead in a car. A little girl's body was discovered in the back seat in the driveway on military housing earlier this month. The mother was taken for a psychiatric evaluation shortly after. We were able to get police records that showed that officers were called to that home back in June. That call was for a report of domestic violence. Child abuse detectives are investigating the girl's death. No arrests have been made. President Trump is escalating the trade war with China. The new tariffs fueling more fears of a possible recession. Here's ABC's Maggie Rooley with the firestorm in Washington. The trade war between the U.S. and China ratcheting up again on Friday, with China announcing retaliatory tariffs on $75 billion of U.S. goods. President Trump striking back hours later, raising the rate of U.S. tariffs on Chinese imports another 5%. He also lashed out on Twitter, writing American companies were, quote, hereby ordered to find alternatives to China. But the president has no authority to order private businesses to cut ties with China. The Dow Jones taking a hit on the news, down 623 points at the closing bell. Earlier this week, the president was asked if this trade war was leading the U.S. into a recession. This is a trade war that should have taken place a long time ago by a lot of other presidents. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it, so I'm taking on China. With his eye on re-election, the president saying the economy is, quote, fantastic and blames any uncertainty over the economy on Fed Chairman Jerome Powell. News of these tariffs came as Powell gave a speech that many will scrutinize, looking for signs of the central bank's next move. 
Powell saying the trade war seems to be playing a role in the global slowdown and in weak manufacturing and capital spending in the United States. The president firing back, tweeting, who is your bigger enemy, Jay Powell or Chairman Xi? President Trump's now headed to France for the G7 meeting, where the global economy is likely to take center stage. Mackie Rooley, ABC News, New York. NBA coach and San Diego native Luke Walton will not be disciplined by the league over sexual assault allegations. Earlier this week, we reported that sports reporter Kelly Tennant accused Walton of assaulting her in a hotel room in Santa Monica back in 2014. At the time, Walton was a coach with the Golden State Warriors. He's currently head coach of the Kings. Well, today, the NBA announced its investigation could not find evidence to support Tennant's claims. Her lawsuit against Walton is ongoing and could go to trial next year. Two Green Berets killed in combat in Afghanistan are now back on U.S. soil to be laid to rest. 31-year-old Master Sergeant Luis De Leon Figueroa and 35-year-old Master Sergeant Jose Gonzalez were both killed in combat on Wednesday. Vice President Mike Pence was there as service members at Dover Air Force Base carried their caskets during the transfer today. They were both promoted to Master Sergeant after their deaths, and De Leon Figueroa received a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star. There is fresh fallout in the wake of a series of high profile scandals involving Navy SEALs. Tonight, the Navy says it is looking to crack down on SEALs. They say have, quote, drifted from Navy core values of honor, courage and commitment. Those recent scandals include allegations of drug use and sexual assault. And in a memo obtained by CNN, the top commander is calling for changes, including reinforcing that SEALs should be loyal to the Navy and country first before loyalty to other SEALs. He also says the Navy will start banning SEALs from wearing the unofficial unit insignia and will conduct routine inspections. Also, they will put a hold on growing existing SEAL teams, saying they will focus now on quality, not quantity. We're all looking forward to a wonderful weekend, but humidity is popping back up. Angelica is tracking these changes on the way. Usually when we say there's a warm up, the first question is, will it be humid? And the answer is yes. I'll pinpoint exactly when, but for tonight, looking lovely around the county, temperatures cooling down, great weather to open up those windows and let some cool and free air conditioning in. 66 degrees in Ramona, 70s in San Diego, still pretty mild tonight, 69 in Carlsbad and around 63 in Fallbrook. So the closer you are to the coast, a little bit warmer. As we go hour by hour here, temperatures will stay in the low 60s overnight inland, but quickly warming up tomorrow to 87 by 1 o'clock in the afternoon. At the coast, temperatures will stay in the mid to upper 70s this weekend. Higher humidity starting Sunday. We are tracking a tropical storm. I'll pinpoint the outlook and how long the humidity will last. Angelica, thank you. It started with the school shooting in Parkland, Florida, but now the youth led anti gun movement has roots here in San Diego. Tonight, the leaders of Teamin' Up held a forum questioning local politicians about what they've done to prevent gun violence. Our tennis reporter Matt Boone spoke to them about how they've been able to channel their activism into political influence. Yeah, many of the region's anti-gun violence groups were here tonight, but what made this special was that it was organized by high schoolers, and they're trying to pressure their local politicians for change. It could have been a Democratic campaign rally, except this event was organized by a junior in high school. We felt like after the El Paso, Gilroy, and uh, Dayton, Ohio shootings, we felt like this was a really important thing to have for our community. Stephen Abrams put the panel together clear on what its priority is. First step is passing universal background checks. For those who underestimate high schoolers as a political force, recent grad Maya Dixon says, yes. watch out. Yes, I just turned 18. As a voter motivated by the shooting in Parkland, Florida, gun safety is a defining issue for her. I would tell them that even after Parkland, we're still scared and that we need to take immediate action because if we don't, then how many more lives will it take? For, for the most part, they were preaching to the choir. Democratic Congressman Mike Levin saying he's already voted on gun safety legislation, but it's stuck in the Senate. Well, it is, of course, sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk. The discussion was very different, however, from an event earlier this week where congressional candidate Carl DeMaio laid out his plan to prevent gun violence, including armed guards on school campuses and making concealed carry legal across the country. In Poway and in Colorado, we saw heroes step forward and they stopped the gunmen. 
and they saved lives. In California, Assemblymember Todd Gloria says new legislation is already coming, including a bill that would close the loophole that allowed the Poway shooter to purchase a gun with a hunting license that was not yet valid. Um, fairly uh, minor stuff is it, uh, in the nature of legisl legislative work, um, but could have real impacts on public safety. And Gloria says that legislation is being fast-tracked and could be voted on by the end of the year. Reporting in Encinitas, Matt Boone, 10 News. Thank you, Matt. And FedEx faced a delay in deliveries this afternoon. Police say a man stole a delivery truck in Lincoln Park. The engine was left running while the driver was dropping off a package. The suspect drove around for about 20 minutes, taking several packages to an address on Logan Street. The man didn't get very far, though. A woman who works for FedEx, who didn't want to be identified, watched the whole thing unfold. She says the company is able to watch where it's trucks are at all times. He must be really dumb to be doing that stuff because you don't, you don't play around with FedEx no more. The man was arrested and charged with theft and possession of a stolen vehicle. Police are still working on recovering the packages that were stolen. Lime Scooters held its first ride class today in Pacific Beach and it gave electric scooter fans some helpful information to stay safe. A couple weeks ago, we took the uh, Lime Scooters downtown and had such a blast. I was wheeling and squealing all the way through. We came to the safety class today because we're very interested in doing more of this. You could call it Electric Scooter 101. Lime's first ride program kicked off in San Diego with a class of 10 riders. They provided them with some new helmets and gave them some basics like how to maneuver the scooters, how to check the brakes and be overall a safe rider. So um, I thought it was some very good information and we're going to be doing um, more of this and be safe. And the helmets look good.